Hey there, good looking. This Fit Tip video is all about osteoporosis and what exercises you need to be doing and what ones you should avoid. Let's get going. Hey there, I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com. And hey, listen, I help women over the age of 40 reclaim the tush of their 20s. So if that interests you, if you want more fit tips, videos, and workouts specific for the over 40 body, then hey, click that subscribe button. Let's keep working together. Today we're talking about osteoporosis. So first off, what is osteoporosis? Well, bone is living tissue that is constantly being broken down and replaced. Osteoporosis occurs when the creation of new bone can keep up with the loss of old bone. This then causes the bones to become weak and brittle, two things we never want to be, and in worst case scenarios, so brittle that a fall or even mild stresses such as bending over or coughing can cause a fracture. Most osteoporosis related fractures happen in the hip, wrist, or spine. And women are most likely to develop osteoporosis. Not to say men can't, but women are most likely. White and Asian women are at greater risk as well, including those of us who are past menopause. And if you are small frames, so you can tell by your wrist, you're at a greater risk as well because you have less bone mass to draw on as you get older. So what can help? Well, if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, your doctor might have put you on medications, but there's some things that you can do right away in addition to, as well, medications. First is eating a healthy diet. Second is weight-bearing exercise. Weight-bearing exercise can help prevent bone loss and strengthen already weakened bones. That is so cool. So let's talk about what exercises will help. Well, they've got to be weight-bearing. So the top of the list is strength training exercises and exercises in particular that train the upper back to help with the posture. Weight-bearing aerobic exercises, flexibility exercises, stability and balance exercises. Those are all perfect for an osteoporosis uh, program. Actually, they're perfect for any program, really. Now, what won't work? for osteoporosis? Well, non-weight-bearing activities, okay? So those include swimming, cycling, and elliptical trainers. Great cardio workouts, but they won't do anything to help build the bone. Now, Osteoporosis Canada recommends at least two days a week strength training. I actually recommend three, okay? Balance exercises daily, posture awareness exercises daily, and at least 150 minutes of aerobic activity a week. Now, some exercises to avoid. High impact cardio moves like running and jumping, okay? Sub in power walking and low impact cardio moves instead. However, okay, I want you to listen to this. Some impact moves could be fine for you. It depends on your history of fractures, the severity of your osteoporosis, and your overall health. So if you've had a fracture in the spine without any major trauma, then yeah, it's super important that we are conservative with your exercise program. But if you're generally fit and strong, despite having osteoporosis, you might be able to engage in some higher impact exercise than someone who is otherwise frail. There really is no one size fits all prescription for exercise when it comes to osteoporosis. So if you're really not sure how healthy your bones are, please talk to your doctor, talk to a health provider, or chat with your physical therapist or physiotherapist so that they can best determine the safest activities for you. Okay, other movements and exercises that you need to avoid if you have osteoporosis. The first is twisting. All right, and this includes common exercises seen on a lot of YouTube workouts, including my own, such as Russian twists and bicycle crunches. So a couple of quick subs you could do for that. For Russian twists, that's training your obliques. Well, you could easily hit your obliques working into a side plank, either modified on the bottom knee or full side plank. Bicycle crunches hit the obliques as well as the rectus abdominis. You could get your transverse and those other muscles fired up doing a front plank, toes or knees to modify. Now, other movement patterns that might be uncomfortable 
are weight bearing on the wrists. And I've done a video on that too, in which I'll link up down below. But push-ups, mountain climbers, if you have osteoporosis, you might have a loss of bone in the wrists and that might be uncomfortable. So feel free to go down onto the forearms or for push-ups, sub in a chest press. So that's using, oh, I just have one dumbbell here. <laughs> Pretend I have two dumbbells. All right, and you get yourself set up and do your chest press pattern with dumbbells while whatever workout video you're watching is doing a push-up. The other thing that you want to avoid are any type of crunching patterns, so flexing the spine. Um, FYI, you need to avoid sit-ups, period. In fact, even if you don't have osteoporosis, there is no benefit to doing a full sit-up like so, all right? All you'll do is train your hip flexors, maybe a little bit of your abs, and then damage your back. Now with osteoporosis, even the crunches, we should be avoiding as well, because that is flexing of the spine, of the upper spine. So a great sub there would be a dead bug, where you're pulling your abs in, anchoring your spine, and then lowering one arm and the opposite leg while maintaining that low back pressed into your floor or that neutral spine, I should say. And then a plank pattern too is a great sub for any crunch type exercise. Now, another thing that needs to be avoided is flexing the spine from a standing position. So that would be hinging from the waist. Now, I get a lot of people commenting on my uh, videos that have osteoporosis looking for exercise subs when we do things like one arm rows, okay? Such as this. You can hinge forward without any stress to the back if you have a neutral spine. So when your doctor says don't bend forward, what they mean is don't bend forward from the waist, which is very stressful for any back. You can stress, so here's my spine, you, you can, sorry, hinge from the hip with no stress to the back. So see how my back stays the same. So if you have osteoporosis, in fact, anyone needs to practice how to get neutral spine, but osteoporosis so that we don't stress the vertebrae of the spine, you need to practice how to get into neutral and maintain it. So use a mirror, place your hands on the very top of your hip crease and hinge your body over the hands by pushing the bum back a bit, softening the knees and hinging forward. Keep practicing that. If you're still not comfortable with hinging forward in movements like a one-arm row, you could use a chair, a bench, even a coffee table. I find placing your knee up helps people find that neutral spine better. The other thing you can do is purchase some tubing and a door attachment. So this sits in my door. I close my door on it and there I can anchor my tubing and it'll hold my tubing for me. I just loop it through here. And again, I did a video on this too. We'll link it up down below. So that's how your tubing would sit and it's closed at a door and now you can do a standing row. So you're staying, you're standing. Now, just a quick FYI in the past, because that is what the research said, I asked you to avoid using exercise tubing if building bone was one of your goals. Well, there's new super cool <laughs> research that has come out that is showing that yes, working with tubing can help increase bone density. So use tubing, all right? If you're not familiar with tubing or this tubing holder, check down in my description box there under fitness with PJ slash shop. And that'll take you to a web page with everything that I recommend for home workouts, including these. So you could be standing with your rows, as I said, if you are not comfortable hip hinging. Another common exercise that you'll see are reverse flies. So again, I've got that hip hinge and I'm working my posture muscles, which is what is recommended for people with osteoporosis. If you're not able to hold that neutral spine, then you can get some tubing and do some face pulls to get that area of the back. The long and short of it is, if you have osteoporosis, 
not exercising is not an option for you. You will need to exercise. You need to exercise on a regular basis. You need weight bearing exercise and you need to train smart. I hope this video helped you. If it did, hey, drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. As mentioned, if you're unfamiliar with the tools that I just showed you, go into the description, check out the shop page on my website. In addition, I'm going to float across in the last 15 seconds of this video, a workout I did specific for osteoporosis. So I look forward to reading your comments. I look forward to you subscribing to that channel so I can keep working with you. And I look forward to seeing you build some bone and some muscle. We'll see you next video.